Hi guys, welcome to this Duit International webinar in collaboration with Lucre. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tal and I'm an FSR at Duit. Today we'll cover how Psychognito has improved its reporting functionality with Lucre's embedded analytics and help its customer reduce the, the time spent analyzing and reporting on digital risks. If you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A section of the webinar tool and we will get to them at the end of the session. With me today, we have Oren Parag from Psychognito and Craig Aragon from Looker. And just to give you an overview of what they will cover today, here is the agenda. We will start with a short overview of Do It International. Then Craig will share more about Looker and its solution. Afterward, we will hear from Oren on the Psychognito use case. Okay, so a bit about us. Doit is a global multi-cloud consultancy and cloud management platform provider. We are Google Cloud Premier Partner and SMB Partner of the Year for EMEA. For over a decade, we help our customers accelerate on their cloud journey by providing training, support, cost optimization, and architecture review. So how exactly can Doit help you make most of, of the cloud? In the context of Google Cloud and Looker, Doit is the largest DCP reseller globally. We provide customers multi-cloud consulting service and work very closely with digital native, looking to leverage uh, the power of scalable infrastructure, Kubernetes, analytics data, ML, and AI. Basically, 85% of our company is made out of senior level engineer, and this is done by design. Our intention is to combine all the muscle memory and hands-on experience that we've acquired over 10 years and openly share our knowledge and best practice to help you avoid the pitfalls that others uh, have faced before you. So how do we do this? Our unique business model provides our customer with unlimited consulting, technical support training, and access to our cloud management platform, all at zero cost. And yes, you heard me correctly. All of our services are delivered at zero cost and there is no catch. So if you wanna learn more, drop me a quick email or visit our website. You can find our details at the end of the presentation. And without further ado, I will pass it on to Craig. Um, hello everyone, N nice to... Nice to be on the call here today. Um, I suppose just to quickly introduce myself. So my name is Craig. Um, so I work here with GCP with the Looker product. Um, and I had the pleasure of working with the Psychognito team uh, as they were actually going through the process of, of building an analytics product with Looker. Um, to get things kicked off, I just thought we'd, we'd start by just giving a quick introduction to Looker. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar, Looker is a, an analytics platform that is now part of Google Cloud. Um, I think one thing that's really important to mention, though, is we're definitely not uh, siloed to just Google Cloud. Um, so if you want to use Looker with data solutions you have sitting across different clouds, such as Amazon or Snowflake or IBM, that's completely possible. Um, so as it stands today, we, we have over 2,700 customers globally. Uh, we have a, a wide community of 5,000 plus people who develop within Looker. Um, but I suppose the really important point on this slide is that one in every two of Looker's customers actually use uh, Looker to power experiences that sit with outside the actual Looker platform. Uh, so we'll obviously be talking about one of those use cases today where, where Psycognito use the Looker platform to provide analytics within their product. Um, but this can be other use cases as well, such as using Looker to power internal workflows within, within your product or company, sorry. So, what I wanted to start off with was, um, I suppose, considerations we encourage companies to make when they're considering building a data product. So for all the, the product managers out there, uh, I suppose first and foremost, what, what's really important is, what's the user interface going to look like and what's that going to experience, user experience going to feel like? Um, however, a lot of the time when we speak with companies, uh, what we actually, uh, encourage them to think about is, is all the other things that need to happen as well in order to have a, a functional product that your customers will love. Um, so this includes areas such as the architecture. Um, what's the simplest way to approach it from an architecture standpoint and, and how do we manage performance? 
uh, to make sure that our customers are happy with the ultimate product. Um, you guys also need to think quite a lot about the user management side of things. Uh, so how you manage authentication, permissioning, uh, all the security side of things that goes with that. Uh, we also quite a lot encourage our clients to think about the, the time to value with these sort of projects. Um, they can be quite big and cumbersome and, and quite hard to get off the ground. Um, so it's something we, we definitely encourage people to think about how quickly they can get up and running, but also what's the maintenance of this long term going to be and what sort of resources are you going to need to assign uh, to, to keep this product up and running. And last but not least, um, the other area we, we encourage people to think about is the, the, the long term view of this product. So how agile is this going to be uh, in terms of developing new features and functionality? Um, and especially if you guys are, are going down the, the buy route and, and using a, a pre-existing solution, how customizable is that? And how are you guys going to be able to adapt that product to, to fit your needs um, as you, you grow over time? So what I always like to say about Looker is, of course, we, we, we provide that pretty front end that, that your users are going to love. But really where the value lies is, is everything that happens in the back end. So just really quickly, what I'd like to do is just touch on the different technology layers in Looker that, that allow us to be such a good fit for this particular use case. So first and foremost, um, with Looker, Looker's entire architecture is built around what we call an in-database architecture. So what this means is we actually, rather than relying on our own compute power, we leverage existing database technology such as Google BigQuery or Snowflake, um, solutions that are built to provide analytics at scale. So at Looker, you're never going to be hindered by um, you know, concurrent users or, or large data volumes because this workload is handled by best-in-class data warehouses. The next layer that makes Looker such a good fit for these particular use cases is our semantic modeling layer. So without going into too much detail, what this allows is for you guys to build a data product built entirely around uh, centralized data logic that you want to provide back to your customers. Uh, so with this modeling layer, you guys can define all of the logic once centrally. It's fully version controlled within Git. Um, and this really leads to that long-term maintainability uh, as you just have to maintain this logic in one place rather than multiple different locations. Last but not least, we understand that your product is your product and that Looker isn't necessarily going to provide uh, everything you want to provide to your customers directly out of the box. That's why we actually provide an, an API, which allows you guys to fully customize your product um, while still using Looker to take care of the user permissioning, the security um, and the scalability side of things, while also having the product look and feel completely like your own product. And last but not least, as I mentioned, uh, Looker is built on a multi-cloud strategy. So you're not locked into just using ECP. Um, if you want to use other solutions such as Snowflake products that sit within AWS or Azure, that again is, is completely possible. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, is hand over to Oren. Uh, I think Oren's going to talk to you a little bit more about how Cycognito built their product and, and the considerations they took. So hi, I'm Oren Parag. Uh, I'm a senior product manager with a cybersecurity startup named Cycognito. Um, so who we are and what do we do? Um, Cycognito, as I mentioned, is a cybersecurity startup. Uh, and our mission is to help customers understand how attackers see their entire internet exposed IT ecosystem. And most importantly, we identify the path that attackers are likely to take when they want to breach an organization and uh, perform some kind of uh, exploit um, or threaten the organization. We call this the path of least resistance, and we focus on how to identify and eliminate those, solving the defender's dilemma, where to defend and how to defend. Um, we do this by uh, several, there are several ways to use our platform to do this. Uh, so first and foremost, we begin by uh, discovering, uh, identifying, fingerprinting, and classifying the organization's internet-facing digital assets, uh, such as web servers, databases, IoT devices, IP cameras, which should not even be exposed to the internet, cloud services and products, uh, VPNs, and gateways. 
um, and of course, many, many more types of uh, digital assets. Then we identify, um, after we identify the assets, we identify or we scan these assets for different risks. So we form vulnerability scanning and identify potential attack vectors through those vulnerabilities that might exist on those digital assets. And then we create a report that, said, that identifies which assets the attackers are likely to attack and how to um, eliminate these risks and block the attack vector. Um, now, other customers use this to monitor. We have huge customers with many, many subsidiaries, and one of their major concerns is, okay, the, the main organization is well defended, but how are their subsidiaries doing? Um, what kind of involvement or, or level of, uh, of control do you have over these subsidiaries? And if they are well protected or if you should enforce some, uh, some contr security controls over them. Uh, we also help our customers uh, assess their security eff effectiveness. So basically, a lot of, uh, of customers, they perform external pen penetration testing or vulnerability scanning or periodic audits. And we help them either expedite or even get rid of this process using our platform. Um, and one of the, um, the very interesting use cases we have is sort of, um, let's say, due dil diligence. So when, when uh, companies want to buy out or merge and uh, acquire other companies, they perform the Sacognito assessment over the, the, the potential um, merger or acquisitions, uh, internet, or sorry, internet facing uh, digital assets. And that way we are able to identify risks prior to acquisitions or mergers. Uh, so that's a general note of how Cycognito, uh, how Cycognito serves its customers with its platform. Um, so uh, the, the way that we wanted to help our customers uh, make use of the platform is by enhancing their ability to inspect and visualize their attack surface. Now the Cycognito platform collects and analyzes vast amounts of data, uh, which our customers then need to review, uh, make decisions and perform different actions pertaining to that data, such as attributing digital assets to different teams, business units or subsidiaries, uh, identifying the risks, triaging the vulnerabilities identified within those risks and prioritize the risk remediation. Now, the major challenge that we had faced with all the data we collect and all these actions was to tell the story through the data without having our customers to manually slice and dice um, or filter the data using uh, different methods to extract it. So, for example, exporting uh, data to spreadsheets or via APIs and then uh, manually run, scanning it through or creating custom reports over it. And we were looking for a way to ease the process of reviewing the data, categorizing it, um, and making the decisions based on the data in a friendly, flexible, and coherent way. And Looker helped us to define the methods and tell the stories to help the customers operationalize the platform and realize value from it quicker uh, using the visual reporting elements. So our journey on data storytelling um, began with defining use cases in business goals, which later on translated to data analysis flows and stories. Um, for example, a top level overview from which users can drill down, identify risks or areas which pose risk, and then break that risk down by at the asset's different properties. So for example, um, one of the use cases was uh, risk mapping and prioritization, um, tracking the risk remediation progress, uh, or, or organizational and subsidiary risk management and trend analysis of the environment. Now, with the delivery of these new reporting capabilities, uh, customers actually were very, very impressed and they claimed that um, A, it made their internal reporting tools redundant and also made them uncover um, other uses, or use cases uh, with the data that they even haven't even thought, thought of um, or start, just started beginning with. So here's, um, what our, our environment looked before Looker. Um, it was a um, general overview, which made it hard to identify the specific areas which uh, require attention, and also um, a grid, basically, with lots and lots of, uh, of rows with information. And after we implemented Looker, 
uh, we were able to transform this into specific dashboards. So for example, the attack surface we managed, uh, we mentioned earlier, and then drill down into specific assets. Um, so what, what, um, what are the most common threats, for example, or how many assets are at risk and the different trends um, over time. One of the major benefits that I'd like to mention or call out um, that we got with Looker was to substantially reduce our time to market with uh, of our reporting capabilities. It helped us shift our main focus to the ideation of the stories we want to tell with the data we collect and analyze, and then adding the visual elements and customizations uh, that help to create a concise story our users can understand and make use of. So once uh, the story and the use case definition has been completed, executing the queries and choosing the data elements to construct a report became rather straightforward. And in most cases, uh, resulted in approximately two, two to three days of engineering effort, including the required touch-ups we had, whereas before incorporating Looker, it took us pretty much uh, three to four times as long as we had to, the added effort that was required to create the visual elements and any customizations uh, we wanted to add. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to pass it on to Tal for some Q&A. Thank you, Oren and Craig, for sharing uh, your experience and insight. Uh, now will be the time to answer your questions. So let's go to the first one. So this one is for Oren. Um, how long did it take to you to migrate your dashboard into Looker? Hi. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just double checking. Uh, so the, the migrations Looker included a, a transfer to a database, to a different database. But so I'll not include it in the time. But uh, from initial setup until we could actually deliver our first, our, our initial value, it took a, a couple of weeks. But from, from the moment it was set up, as I called out in the last slide, it takes us from ideation of the report or dashboard that we want to build to actually delivering it to customers less than a week. Pretty much. Great, thank you, Oren. Um, one more question for, for you. Um, how many people did you have working on this project? Uh, so we had about um, two to three engineers, one on the database end, um, the, uh, and one one looker expert, where actually that was the fastest time uh, to delivery on anything, um, and another one on our application side. So basically the embedding and integration of looker uh, in our, uh, or within our, our environment. Great. And the last one, um, again to Oren. <laughs> Do you have any tips uh, what we should do, um, what we should look out for when embarking on such project? Sure. Um, so I think the first and foremost thing when uh, you know, embedding analytics is to have a well-defined data model. Um, it all starts from there. And um, think about the stories you want to tell with the data that you have. I think that, that's the part that takes the most effort. Um, once you have the story in place, look, Looker makes it very easy to deliver that through their different visualizations. Thank you, Oren. Thank you, Craig. Thank you all for joining today. Um, I hope you find our webinar insightful and looking forward to see you in the next one.